Hello, welcome to my summer series of Dear Jayla. You sent in your questions and I am answering them. And today comes from Robin, who asked, how do I accept that there is only so many hours in a day and that I'm set up with my specific physiology and personality? Yesterday, for example, I had four projects I wanted to get to and I got to two before I utterly collapsed. I'm wondering if working with fewer projects on my plate makes sense. What happens if I work on fewer with fewer projects on my plate? The matter is not being terrified for the ones not currently on the plate. There's so much, there's so much in this. Um, I think a lot of people take on a lot of things because, well, a few reasons. I think there's, it can be a, like a genuine, you know, when you're a creative, you've got a lot of projects, like a genuine, um, like joie de vivre, love of life, uh, creative impulse to make things, take things on, get somewhere. Mm. But I think that there can be, and I, and I see it in your language, the matter is not being terrified for the ones that are not currently on the plate. So, um, what, what is the impulse to have a lot on the go? What does having a lot on the go and getting a lot done or tending to many projects, what does that give you? Um, for example, a sense of significance, um, a sense of possibility or potentiality of success, of something's happening, I'm getting somewhere, I'm up to something, and what that means about me by doing that. I think a lot of people there, that um, there can be, and I, and I can feel this, and there's only so many hours in a day, is like a race against time to get more done. What is that? What is that about? Like, why, why so many things? It's, it's like pretty ripe in the collective, seems like. I mean, I know I experience it. And so I'm just going to, I want to talk about the projects themselves and like the terror of the ones not currently on the plate, but like, I'm going to guess that at some level there is, this is like got to do with death. Hear me out. Um, there many people experience a sense of terror in spaciousness or a sense of anxiety when not moving and producing and getting somewhere um, like you're going to get behind or not get ahead or miss an opportunity. Um, and so then cram things in. But then when we take on more than we can do, ugh, defeat, failure. So I think that's an interesting inquiry is like, what part of your identity gets sustained by having more projects than you can actually get to and then not getting to them? Like what stories do you then tell yourself? Um, and what if those stories feel familiar? Because that will keep you in, you know, our identities will keep us in a pattern. So if there's something like, oh, I don't finish things that I start. Um, well, maybe I start a lot of things and then I don't finish them because it's just not tenable. And that keeps this a story in place. Or what happens when you do do one thing at a time or fewer projects? What story might you have that that means about yourself or your security or your significance or um, what matters to you? So those would be some questions that I would pose there. Um, and how do I accept that there are only so many hours in a day? Grief, grief, like the things that I want to do that I will never do. Um, and then all the things that I still think I'm going to do that I'm also never going to do. I haven't grieved those things yet. I'm still like hanging on. Um, but there are, there are only so many hours in the day and you only have so much energy and, it's like we live in this finite place where our creative spirit may feel infinite. And for me, the best thing I can do with that is feel my feelings, my grief, my anxiety, 
my disappointment, my longing for the unbirthed creative babies. Um, and then when being able to wade through some of that, like acceptance and feeling and, and allowing ourselves to feel what we can't do, that there are limits, it's not limitless. <sighs> and then knowing our patterns, like, well, why taking on more projects than you can actually do? Um, why not try fewer on the plate? And ooh, what happens with that failure? So one of the things that I'm always looking at is um, what's our inner work and what's our outer work? So here you're talking about your outer work of these projects that you've got going on, but what's the inner work of catching on to yourself and your patterning and your stories and your identities that reinforce a pattern that makes your engagement with those projects unsustainable? Um, that is the place that I would point you to explore. And then um, the last thing I want to say is about the projects themselves. So the matter is not being terrified for the ones not currently on the plate. And I think that that's a really interesting wording because you didn't say terror for yourself about what you're not getting to. You said terror for the ones not currently on the plate. And so here's what I'm making up. And let's see if this resonates for you is that these projects have their own soul. These projects are their own entities that you are stewarding and you are in relationship with. And so when you are turning away from one or not tending to one, there is a terror of what will it become? Will you ever come back to it? Will it, if it has chosen you to bring it into form, will it see the light of day if you leave it and just tend to those two projects for the next little while? So one of the ways that I've tried coping with this one is to speak to um, the soul of that work. So um, as you may know, a couple of years ago, year ago, who knows, time is, time's not linear, <laughs> speaking of hours in the day. Um, you know, I had just been getting some beautiful momentum going with my uh, group program lead and had um, iterated it into a nine month program, was gearing up to, um, was gearing up to offer it. And I was like, I don't know. I need a break. I can't do this. And I was feeling like beholden, not just to the possible people who would be in that group and the people who've been waiting for the group, but actually beholden to the work. Like I would put a lot of time and energy and devotion into this body of work. And I didn't want to just um, scrap it you know, for myself, for my own efforts, but also like for the work, I felt like it was good work. And so I, I wrote a letter and I got into dialogue with lead as a body of work, as its own entity, assuming, and I just said, Hey, what do you want? And you know what lead said? She said, I'm young. I got time. I got so much time. And I thought, oh, wow. And it just like the spirit felt like this, like maiden frolicking through the woods. Like I'm good. I'm over here. Let me know when you want me to, you know, come incarnate or whatever. So I'd offer that to you is if you have many projects on the go and part of the terror is about what will become of the project. What if you had a conversation with your projects, ask them what part of their own life cycle they're in? What season is each one in? What does it need? You may be surprised. And as, as an artist, as a creative, as I know you are, um, maybe they'll have all sorts of things to reveal to you. Like, mm, I'm like cozy over here. I'm good. You leave me. Or like, you know what? I need you to just like, mm, just shine a little bit of attention on me just with thought every day, but you don't need to do anything. Or maybe it's like, listen, bitch, I'm the one. It's my turn. Give me your attention or I'm going to go find somebody else. So that's my invitation because the other thing that's just occurring to me as I say this is I think something that can happen with hours and projects and productivity is we can start to feel like it's all up to me. It's all up to me and my own effort and my time management and being efficient or getting things. And it's like, I think that that's just, it's not. It's up to, you know, you said your own physiology and person and personality. It's like, 
yeah, you've got, you've got what you've got to bring to the table. And then there's going to be the way that life conspires with you or against you or around you. And sometimes some projects I find just go, they fly, they're easy and free. And it just like flows through me. And other ones are like a grind and a mountain and just like take everything out of me. And sometimes when I am in a place of it's all up to me and I need to figure it out and I get in figure out mode and find the solution mode, there's actually something that feels a little irreverent about that, but not like the cool irreverence, but like, um, like not honoring that there's a mystery to all of this. And I'm a co-conspirator. I am a participant. I am in relationship with that, which is greater than me. And especially when it comes to creative projects um, and creative projects. I mean, I might just be talking about like a creative project where I'm the only human involved, but then you start getting other people involved. And it's like, there are all sorts of different cycles and seasons and dynamics and needs um, as an ecosystem that are playing out. And so there may be other things to listen to um, other than feeling like you need to maximize or get as much done as possible. So I love it for you. Like what happens if I work with fewer projects on my plate? That's the question. Not the question to answer, but the question to live and then see what answers come. Hope that's helpful. Thanks for your question. That was fun to riff on.